Good day, dear viewers. My name is Luke Tessier, and this is A Form of Sound Words. We continue today with our study of the fruit of the Spirit mentioned in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. And this week, we're considering the sixth fruit, goodness. As mentioned in our last study together on the fruit of gentleness or kindness, the fruit of goodness is very closely related to the fruit of gentleness or kindness. They're sisters, twin sisters even. Goodness in the authorized version comes from the Greek word agathosune, and this word means uprightness of heart and life, intrinsic goodness or kindness. This word differs from the Greek word translated gentleness in Galatians 5.22, Christotes, in the following fashion. Christotes is the showing of useful, practical kindness, while agathosune speaks of integrity, being principled and consistent with that which is good and right. What's interesting about agathosune is that it only shows up four times in scripture, and according to Thayer's Greek lexicon, the word was only ever used in scripture and in ancient church writings. The first scriptural instance is found in Romans 15, verse 13 and 14. It says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. The second instance is in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, where we have the list of the fruit of the Spirit. After that, we have Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 to 10. There we read, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And the fourth and last usage of agathosune is found in 2 Thessalonians, verse 1, 11 to 12. There we read, Wherefore also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's focus for a moment on the first and third scriptural usage of Agathosune, because there our word goodness, is surrounded with other virtues that I believe contextually fleshes out the meaning of goodness. In Romans 15, verse 13 and 14, Paul tells the Romans that he was persuaded that they were full of goodness, knowledge, and capable of gently reproving one another. There's a hint here. And there are more hints in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 to 10, where Paul states that walking in the light meant walking in the fruit of the Spirit, in all goodness, righteousness, 
and truth. I believe it is through the analysis of the verses that we are able to distinguish the twin sisters, Christotes, kindness, and Agathosune, goodness. An example of kindness is like the following verses taken from the parable of the Good Samaritan. In Luke chapter 10, and we'll be reading verse 30 and verse 33 to 35. There we read, And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. This is a great example of kindness, useful works of kindness. Now, an example of goodness would be what we read in Acts 17, verse 10 to 11. There we read, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These, the Bereans, were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. The Bereans were more noble, more principled, more interested in righteousness and truth. So this is an example of biblical goodness. And so is this other example taken in Galatians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. There we read, But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Oh, now that's different, isn't it? I'm sure some wouldn't view this moment between the Apostle Paul and Peter as an example of goodness. And yet, it was. Peter needed this gentle reproving and correction. And Paul was principled enough, upright in heart and mind enough, to correct his brother. This is biblical goodness, and it is desperately needed in our present day. We need principled, upright, morally consistent men and women in our world now more than ever. In closing, let's consider the second and fourth usage of the word agathosune, goodness, in the New Testament. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 tells us that goodness is a fruit of the Spirit. And in 2 Thessalonians 1.11, Paul prays that the Thessalonians would walk worthy of their Christian calling, practicing God's goodness. Important lesson and safeguard to pay attention to right here. The goodness we are to practice, the integrity, the principles we are to practice are not our own. This isn't self-righteousness. The source of biblical goodness 
is the Lord himself. The practice of biblical goodness can be perverted when the integrity and principles are built on personal opinion or carnal philosophy and not the whole counsel of God. There is no shortage of souls out there who claim to be practicing biblical goodness, but are practicing anything but. Beware of those who claim to stand for and contend for biblical principles, but whose fruit is pride, strife, and division. Philippians 2, verse 1 to 5 says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's right. The fruit of the spirit of goodness is the goodness the Lord Jesus Christ exemplified. Goodness that is consistent with the other fruit of agape love, joy, patience, kindness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Brothers and sisters, the Lord help us to walk uprightly with integrity and to be known as a people who are good and do good. And with that, dear viewers, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Right.